morning. So this morning I was driving, and so yesterday, um, just let's r rewind to yesterday. Actually, so Austin, Steph, and I did a 10K run yesterday. We did it, yes. Um, and so as I hit the finish line, I hit it at one hour, 11 minutes, and 11 seconds. And, and normally I would be very like, because of how I function, very disappointed. I would be like, oh, I could have done it under an hour and 10 minutes, right? Like two minutes kind of thing. But, but something was profound about the one, 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 one. And I just kind of didn't think much about it. And this morning I got up and I'm like, ah, oh, God, like there was something very specific about the moment, because it's the moment I stepped on the finish line that it changed to 11 seconds. Like it was one, one, one at that exact moment. Um, and as I'm, I'm driving out this morning, um, I, one of the things that got really challenged me on for this run was that I paced myself the same throughout. That uh, part of my personality, I start off really strong and I'm like, yeah, and then I hit the 3K mark and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna do this. But God said, I want your last kilometer to be the same as your first kilometer. I want it to actually be very persistent and consistent. Um, so I was very thankful for this lady in front of me because her pace was just like perfect. So I just ran behind her, and at the finish line, I passed her. So, yeah, I'm like, I still had to have that competitiveness come out somehow, but I followed her till just before the finish line, and then I went. But I was so thankful because it was. But then this morning, as I'm just kind of like going, like, God, what was this? He said, Noel, oftentimes in faith, people start off strong. And they're like, I'm going to believe God for this. And then we're hitting this point where we're like, I'm not seeing it. And then it's like, oh, I guess I could just, my pace can change. And you turn into this slower pace to the point where you might end up walking. Like it's this thing where, where that was such a profound thing because I didn't connect it. I wouldn't have connected it before this morning that there was something very specific. And then as I hit the finish line and it was one, God said, Noel, you finished where you started. See, it was the same pace because it was the pace thing. So it's just this prophetic picture of where I really stayed within pace. And, and part of what I, I, I just this morning was God was very clear about it because lately he's been, as I'm reading scripture, he would ask me two very specific questions. He would ask me firstly, what does that mean to you? And then as I kind of talk to him about it, he goes, do you believe it? See, because it's, it's very, it, it, it's important that we actually go, God, no, I don't believe that. Like, we have to be real with God because we want to live in this, like, thing and this image that we're like, yeah, I believe everything the Word of God says. And the truth of it is, sometimes I read Scripture and I'm like, God, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I actually go, this is, and so, so why am I not? So I'm having to ask God questions back. And one of the scriptures that he really, like, started challenging me on is, like, he asked me to read Psalm 23. And part of my heart went, oh, you know, like, I didn't go, ugh. But, you know, I was like, ah, oh, God, I've read this scripture so many times. You know, how about a scripture that I don't know kind of thing? And, and he's like, no, I want you to read it. And I'm reading Psalms 23. And, and it's, I've, I've always read it with this sweet connotation. Like, he's my shepherd. He's like, I lay down in pastures and stuff. And he said, no, but what happens when something comes for the sheep? There's something that happens to the shepherd where he turns violent and he says, you do not get to touch this. Because if we read the scripture further, it says that in the presence of my enemies, he sets a table before me. So that means that I can sit in the presence of my enemies and he's there protecting me. And he's like, you have to begin to shift how you read the scripture and believe it. Because faith says that when I go into the enemy's camp, I have a protector, I have a shepherd. See, the scripture now looks different for me because now I go, my shepherd goes with me into the presence of my enemies and I get to feast in the presence of my enemies so nothing can touch me. Like I actually it shifted my mindset. And as we're here in worship this morning, I could hear this phrase, faith is personal before it's corporate. See, faith is a personal thing. And I could see these two pictures. I could see the story of Moses and, and the Israelites at the Red Sea. And I could see the scripture of Joshua at the river, at the Jordan River. 
See, and there's this thing because over here in the wilderness when they went and scoped out the land, Caleb and Joshua, faith was personal for them. That's why when everybody else was like, no, we can't do that, they said, no, God said, so I believe. I believe what God said. And they were actually the generation that took the land. Because as I'm reading Joshua 1.11 this morning, it says that Joshua said, go into the camp and tell everybody in three days, we're going and we're taking the land. He didn't say, like, we're going to go try and take the land in three days. He said, I'm still holding on. I'm still running at the same pace I ran 40 years ago when I was in the wilderness and I saw the land. I'm still there. My faith is still there. And now we're actually going to step into it. So he said, prepare. Prepare, and in three days, we're taking the land. Bring your provision, and we're taking the land. And, and as I thought of our, our worship this morning and the prophetic words in worship, I'm like, God, how often do I walk out of here? And I'm like, that was nice worship. But one of the words was stand still and lean in. Stand still and lean in. And it's this thing of like, are we just going to go home today and be like, oh, that was a nice message about faith. That was nice prophetic words about faith. Or are we going to go, God, I'm going to run at a pace where I'm like, I am believing for big things. And last week, Pastor Brent asked us to go home and write down big things. And it's, if you haven't, that was actually a homework that we're in the season where God says, I need you to write that down. But as I'm sitting in worship this morning, um, God says, no, that's comfortable. Because you then get to go, oh, I believed for this. He's like, so I need you to go tell someone you trust what you're believing for. You actually have to go, I am not seeing it, so I'm going to share it with someone because it's so big. And, and so when it comes, I'm not like, oh, yeah, I believed for that. Because what can happen is now that person that I'm sharing with, I can go, I'm really, really standing in faith for this because I cannot see it. And so I just felt like even it was so profound that God can use the natural things that we do to speak deep, spiritual, profound things to us. Because if I did not obey, here's the thing, if I did not obey his voice in running the same pace, I would not have had the revelation of what he's calling for this season. I wouldn't have. So obedience is absolutely key. And we have to do what God tells us to do. This is seriously what I recognized even this morning. It's like, we have to do what God calls us to do. If he called someone else to run as fast as they could or as slow as they could or walk, that is their business. But we can't be like, oh, no, Emma, should I do this? But Because everybody's... No, we have to get to the place where we're like, God, I am going to obey your voice. This is personal. This is personal. This is personal. But at the same time, we have to obey at a corporate level. When Brent goes, please go write it down, and we're sitting week after week after week, and we have nothing on paper, what we've done is we've disobeyed. So we can share it as much as we want with everybody else, but what we haven't done is obeyed the first step, which was go sit down and write it down. See, it is. We, we like to like make our own things, but it, it is the season where God said we have to run with the same pace. So as we're writing down these big things, three months from now, we should not have things come out of our word. I guess it will happen when it happens. We have to still have the same declaration and decree that God said, and I believe. God said, and I believe. So I just, it, it was just profound to me that God used something so amazing yesterday to just speak something so profound. Are you ready? Because there's more. This morning in worship, we declared there's more to come. And we pushed it. And some po at some point in time, it's, it's exactly what Emma talked about. In the, we broke through. We broke through to where there's a belief that there's more. And we declared it enough that the heavens opened up so that it can come. We decreed there is more. Now, I felt like I, I actually, um, it's actually Job 22, and I am really bad at references, so I was actually thrilled that Emma got one wrong, because, boy, that woman knows the word. Um, 
but I'm going to back up a little and, and, and I'm going to read through this passage because again what she said you know we take this verse and we speak this verse okay but we don't do it in context and she talked about because we we're not lining up with the purposes and plans of God but when you put it in the context there's another reason why we don't decree with faith and we're gonna take a look at it because we must everybody say I must I must we have taken our prayer uh, team on Wednesdays has shifted through seasons of God training us in different types of prayer and different types of war and warfare prayer and confidence and discernment. And then God said, the whole church has to come. We have to do this as a body. For what we're dealing with in our nation, we must do this as a body. Say, I'm in. I mean, that sounded like amen, which is the same thing. Are you ready? Job 22, starting at 21, even though the verse she quoted was verse 28. It says, acquaint now yourself with him. Agree with God and show yourself to be conformed to his will. It should be something that's visible. And be at peace. And that's the key. See, it's like, oh, I don't know if I can decree. I'm not at peace about decreeing it. It's because you're not, you're not conformed to God's will. You're not decreeing what he wants to be decreed in the season. We're grasping because we don't know because we haven't even sat to listen. Oh, Jesus. I love you. Forgot to say I love you first. All right. Woo. Be at peace by that. You shall prosper, and great good shall come to you. Receive, I pray you, the law and instruction from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If we do not have the words of God in our hearts, they will not come out of our mouths. And we cannot decree anything that is not the word of God. Verse 23, if you return to the Almighty and submit and humble yourself before him, you will be built up if you put away unrighteousness far from your tents. We started the service by the Lord giving us direction prophetically that we were to let the river and the presence of God flow over us and wash us and cleanse us. Those things that we hide, those things that we, that we overlook, those things that we rationalize. And we do not have the boldness and the confidence to decree things when we think, I'm unworthy. And we think, I'm unworthy because we have sin. I love you. Oop, there's another one. We do. So it's not like that when, when she... Um, Haley talked about barring those big castle doors because we don't want the river to come. That is a shame-based reaction that is demonic. The minute when I, okay, I have grandsons and they like the dirt and I have fake nails and I don't like the dirt. So I tried to garden with them one year and it's like I would work and then I'm like, oh, and I'm running in with a toothbrush and I'm cleaning them because I want them to be clean. It, dirty doesn't feel good. So we have to go like, oh, wash that off, oh, that God, and keep short accounts, really short accounts, really short accounts, and, and to stay cleansed, because our peace and our confidence comes from having our heart good with the Lord, that we're comfortable. So this is the context of decreeing, not just to know the word, but to know that we know it and we're lined up with it and to know that we're not carrying around something that the devil can use to make us feel unworthy to speak. It's, if we understood from God's perspective what cleansing and righteousness looked like, we would run to him. So we need to ask for our mind to be renewed. Okay, keeping going. If you lay gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brook, consider them of little worth, and make the Almighty your gold and the Lord your precious silver treasure. Then you will have delight in the Almighty and you will 
lift up your face to God. God doesn't have a problem with gold. He's paved the streets with it in heaven for us to walk on. The only problem he has is when we make it an idol and it becomes first before God. You might not have an issue with with worshiping finances or money or provision. You may your your gold may be what other people think or say. Your gold may be whatever. We hit this a few weeks ago. What things make what what's in the way on our list of priorities that needs to to be shifted down. It's still okay to have these things as priorities, but God must be number one. And then, see, you can just go. Lift up your face to God. Hi. I have to watch it. I get a little dizzy. One more day of fast. Day and a half, actually. Oh, Jesus, for counting. <laughs> we started counting the hours. <laughs> you will make your prayer to him, and he will hear you, and you will pay your vows. You shall also. Prayer and decreeing are two different things. Prayer is asking. Decreeing is telling. You will make your prayer to him, and he will hear you. You shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways when they make you low. We're going to get in a few weeks to what I feel the Lord is saying, how to prepare for the things that are coming. When they make you low, you will say, there is a lifting up. Not, God, will you lift me up? Is that what it says? No, because we are decreeing. So if things start to come and something, you feel something pressing, pressing down, pressing down, you just say, there is a lifting up. I decree a lifting up. I decree a lifting up. Ooh. And the humble person, he lifts up and saves. Humble is when God's first. He will even, this is beautiful, everybody say Canada. Canada. I love Canada. He will even deliver the one for whom you intercede, who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands. Psalm 103. Verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Not hearkening to the voice of Charlene, but hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, his heavenly hosts, the armies of heaven. He is the Lord of the armies of heaven. He is the Lord of hosts. You his ministers who do his pleasure. And in Hebrews it says that they are ministering servants of God sent for us. We are not going to win this spiritual battle that nations all over the world, every nation is in this spiritual battle. We are not going to win this spiritual battle without angelic support, help, and ministry. We are not. And if you actually go read those crazy battle stories in the Bible, this is not something God has never done before. This is how he operates. He has angelic assistance for people all the way through scripture. I, you know, and I always talk about, you know, how th there's a battle with Joshua and, and these armies came against Joshua and, and they were fighting and then God sent hailstones, not little hail, big hailstones. And, and he, he took out 
the enemy, but not one Israelite was hit by a hailstone. Now, you know when you're in battle that that is physically and naturally impossible. And so I'm like, oh, God, you know, did I, you, how cool was that? And this is what I felt. No, this is Charlene. This could be wrong. But I felt like the angels just kind of, you know when you have a snowball fight and, and you get your stash and you're, you're behind your wall and you get your stash. Come on, who's, who's had a good snowball fight? And you stash them up and you make a pile of them and you pick them up. And I felt like the angels had the hailstones. And they're like, watch me pitch this one. And boom. Because they hit them hard enough, they killed them. They were big enough, they killed them. And I thought about it. I thought, maybe you didn't specifically send them, but the angels hit them with the hailstones. I think they would have been having a riot. Sorry. It would have been huge, huge fun. Okay. So we know what's in the Word of God. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you a few of these. Are the, these are the thoughts. I started thinking about decrees. And we know that decrees are made by kings. I could stand on the street corner of Estrahazy and decree that garbage day will be on Monday and nothing will happen. Because I don't have the authority to make that decree. Now the town council does. And they give, they say this is the structure and these streets are getting done on this day and these streets are getting done on that day. So we can look at this and we go, okay, well, I'm not a king. That's actually a lie. Because Jesus said you are. God said you are kings and priests unto me. So you have to understand, when your heart is cleansed, and you know the purposes and plans of God, and you know the words so you have something to decree, to whatever the particular situation, you also have the authority to decree it. One of the things, oh, pet peeve, is this a bunny trail? Maybe. One of the things that really irritates me, I might have to repent for this, so if I do, you all hold me accountable, is when parents tell their children something or ask them or tell them something to do in a tone of voice that's a question. Would you put your clothes away for mommy? I don't, I don't know about you. I never did that. But that's like, no. Or what other? It's like, no, I won't do that for you. It's like, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it because if you don't, something will happen to you. So there is a tone. Kings speak in a certain way. And we have been instructed by God to make decrees as his kings on earth. The, the church is not a Sunday gathering. The church is a governmental family that has the warfare strategy and ability from God to back up what they're saying. We tear down principalities and powers because he said so. So everybody say, I'm a king. Justin's got nothing on me. Don't say that. <laughs> Kings make decrees because they have the means and the authority to do what they say. When I say this is going to happen and I'm the king, I have the army behind me to back it up. And we do. It is the army of, of heaven. Decrees are heralded loudly. Who has watched Shrek? Do, do, do. Hear ye, hear ye. See, they did them loud enough that nobody could say, I didn't hear. Oh, I didn't know. When I make a decree, everything in the spirit realm knows I have made a decree. And they hear the tone in my voice. See, that's what we're to do. Ooh, angels hearken to the word of the Lord. And yes, through that, my Shrek il il illustration was, decrees have a corporate audience. In the spirit realm, it's, it's not just one thing. It's a corporate audience in the spirit realm. God hears. Jesus and the Holy Spirit hear. 
the angels hear, and every little wiggly, slimy little demon hears, every principality and power hears. They all hear. <gasps> but <laughs> you cannot think a decree. Because you can hear your thoughts. Jesus, Holy Spirit, and Father God can hear your thoughts. But the enemy does not hear your thoughts. So you are wasting your time. This week, before we watch that, um, I was sitting with the Holy Spirit. And uh, <laughs> it's all good. And I, I was listening to, to what he was saying, and, and we, we, we've got the blueprint, the skeleton, the structure for, for the warfare for this season. And, uh, and we shared it uh, on, on the Sunday night service at Worship Unlimited this, this summer. And, and I have been... a little bit grieved in my heart because it's like we're going into a, a season that the body of Christ hasn't walked in before and nobody knows what to do. We know everything that we've been doing up to this point has been holding the ground that we got pushed back into. And I shared with someone, I'm taking a little, because I have to say this first, I shared with someone that went to Yorkton on Friday um, for the Drag Queen Story Hour, and I just said, this is what, uh, Brent and I don't feel we should go, but this, was, this is my wisdom for you. Now, I don't have this. There are churches and pastors who have spiritual authority in Yorkton, and they, because this is what we felt. We could go stand there, but when we go, we go. And so the leadership there has to take that place in the spirit realm so they can hold it. And I said, but this is what I know. Um, in Calgary, when the prime minister went, there was, um, I think it was a stampede, I don't know, there were, there were a bunch of dads, actually, saying, yelling at him, leave our kids alone. Leave our kids alone. Leave our kids alone. And, uh, and that was good. Because of the dynamic of it, it was open, it was public air. Um, but I said it's really, really important that we don't sound like the woke people sound. Because there's a bitter, ugly, angry, and, and it's, got a, it's got a sound. And the church should never sound like that. So I said, this is what I, I encourage you not, not to, to do that. I said, and get little things. You got things ready on your phone. Because there are drag queens that say, what are you parents doing? This is what drag queens do. This is what happens in drag things. Why would you take your child and put them into that thing? That's abusive. It's wrong. Don't do it. Which is really bizarre when you think about it. But they do have that moral toothpick in their body. And just say, would you like to watch this? Because this is, this is also a drag queen. Like, I just, just kind of be wise and to prepare that if you have, if somebody says, you shouldn't be doing this, like, like hey, would you like to, like, this is why I am, because this drag queen said this. And that you could be ready to give an answer, but not to, not to have the sound of the world. But I, I wasn't there, I wasn't leading, I wasn't, because I'd have had everybody just kneel down and just pray. And just pray, God, we pray for these people's salvation. That's what I would have done. Because we, when we sound like them, because I did, somebody sent me a clip, and I'm like, oh, God. And then, but not everybody was doing it, and it's not because they weren't supportive. It's because it's like, that doesn't sound, it's not a good sound for the church. So we can go and we can protest things. I think sometimes you, we, we need to, but we need to watch what the sound is. But, cause, cause, because there are people in the world that don't know how, how to pray and what to do and what to say. And there's, <laughs> there's a million-person march coming up to, to address the curriculum in schools, and it's organized across Canada by a Muslim. Thank you, Jesus. Because there was a comment on the video 
about what happened in, in front of Coles in Yorkton. And, and, and somebody said, oh, these Christians, da-da-da, and they're not loving, and they're not whatever, because they don't know. And I was going to write back and just respond and just say, did you ask them, were they all Christians? Because I have talked to lots of people who aren't, who also feel this way. And I know there's an awful lot of, every Muslim, it's not a Muslim in Canada that would say this is okay. So I was just wondering, why did you pick on Christians? Very easy targets. Yeah, because you can't pick on a Muslim. Thank you, Jesus. We all freaked when that law came, Islamophobia, and we put a law. Thank you, Jesus. Because, But listen, we must stand with them. But that's not how we fight. That's how we stand. We fight and we war in the heavens. So I'm sitting there with the Holy Spirit, and actually what happened, I don't even know if you were saved yet. You asked, I don't know if you asked or your mom asked, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how to pray. Can you give me scriptures to pray? And I'm like, Ugh. so I tried to write out, you know, pray for Canada. So I tried to write out some scriptures. And then we get to prayer regularly. Those of you can go like, oh, yeah, Charlene, you do this all the time. And I would just, you can open just about to anywhere in, in the scripture and, and pray. And we're, we're going to pray the word over these. We're going to pray the word. And I found, though. No, Sometimes I'm going, God, that sounds really angry, you know, but there's, there's an authority in it. And, and so I, and I've done it on and off and on and off for at least a year, at least a year. How do we pray for our nation? So I'm sitting there and I start to read and I'm like, oh, those are good scriptures. Those are decree. Cause see, I said the word pray, cause that's kind of our lingo. It's like Kleenex is really tissue. Kleenex is a brand name. And God said, start to write them down. I want you to write a book of word warfare faith decrees for Canada. So I... Did some, and then I'm like, I went inside and had a little chat. I am a talker. I am not a writer. I don't like to write. I can't write as fast as my brain goes. And then it doesn't come out the same. You know, I have half sentences. I don't preach from notes like Brent does. My brain does not work that way. Yada, yada, yada. But if you say, so, okay, I'll do it. And then I wrote, I, I did another day. And then I'm like, oh, God. So then Brent and I are sitting on the swing, and he starts reading some scriptures. I'm like, those are good ones, you know. And you know, he has an anointing to hear the word and, and, and put the word all over. If, if you're at prayer, you know, this is perfect. That's how Brent functions. Whew. So all of a sudden, I'm sitting there, hmm. Because the other thing is, I don't like to do things alone. <laughs> right? Do you all know that? I don't need you, but will you come? Whereas Brent goes, I don't need anybody. Why would I ask somebody to help me? I'm, I'd be faster on my own. I'm like, oh. So the two of us together are perfect. But so I told him, I said, so this is what God told me to do. Will you help me? Because he also types like 30 times faster than I do. And I'm like, oh, 25 times, he says. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And, and, and then I said, I said, and there has to be categories. See, I asked for help, and then, there's, and then there has to be categories. And, then, and I read prayer books, and, and we pray out of prayer. There's people who've amassed word prayers for healing and word prayers for this, and it's fantastic. And that's kind of how I learned how to pray, and I have a book for you. But it, it's personal. And, and they'll, they'll have a prayer for a church, and they'll even pray for the government and for the nation. But they're not decrees. They're not, God, you said, send your angels to do this. Because that, not standing in a bookstore, although that is important, is the only thing that is going to change. Because what's happening on earth is a reflection of what's going on in the spirit realm. So we must address it in the spirit realm. So uh, after that, I, we listened to Emma talking about decrees. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I write a book. 
<laughs> See, if I, if I hadn't told Brent, you know, I could have maybe just, you know, except we don't have time. We don't have time. And there was a prophetic word from Sam and Emma. They came to Canada and they just, they just gave the, God said, this is what's wrong. Because we hit a point in prayer, I may have shared, shared this already, but we hit a point in prayer where I said, we've got to stop praying for Canada because I don't know what to pray. We don't know what to pray. And so we just prayed locally. So then, and it's like, oh, okay, God. And we recognize we must take personal deliverance and, and corporate deliverance, and because churches need to be delivered. Some of them are operating under all kinds of things. And we need to shift it into to deliverance over cities, like, you have to understand entire cities can be saved. And nations can be saved. And so then we're dealing with not personal little low-level, get rid of them demons. We're dealing with principalities and powers. It's no harder to get rid of them. We just must have agreement. So if we have decrees that we can all decree together that are God's words, the king of kings, and we are releasing them into the spirit realm, the angels can take them and they can, they can change our nation. So then I phoned my friend, Jocelyn, because she's an editor. God gave me an editor like two years ago. I should have known. Sometimes prophets are like, I'm okay, how, or you're okay, how am I? Sometimes we don't know our own stuff. It's like, so I said, hey. Um, and I had that little conversation with her. And once I'd shared it outside of Brent and I, I'm like, because now I said, I need to do this because now I can't walk away because she'll be like a fire on my behind. So we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, whew. <clears throat> the next two months. So it's a big, it's a big project. So, oh, I was telling about Sam and I'm like, God, where was I? <laughs> Sam and Emma, and, and Sam talked about the immaturity of Canada. And, and, uh, and then it was going to take five years. And I'm like, God, I don't think we got, like, I don't know that we can survive five years of, of what the enemy has for us. And so I went up to him because we're in Houston. Did I tell you guys this already? I'm going to repeat it again because maybe somebody's watching and hasn't. So I'm looking and it's like everybody's visiting and Sam's right there up on the platform. And, and I went, and I went up, I said, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. So I told him, hey, we watched you and we got this prophecy. And I and and I didn't tell him anything about us. And I just said, so what I need to know is, does it have to take any five years? Or is there anything we can do to accelerate it? And he says, no. And then he said, well, yes. yes. And he said, there, if there, are pocket, there will be pockets of places. And I believe he began to prophesy. There will be pockets pockets of places all over Canada. He said, most of them will be smaller groups, smaller hubs. And he said, and they will begin to bring, he said, the breakthrough for the nation. He said, it will s still take two years. And then he said, and during that time, the divide between those that whoop, really know what's going on and those that are struggling, as in what God is doing and what he wants to do, will increase so the church, there will become even more wider of a gap between congregations all over the place because they're going like, you guys are whatever, and, you know, the government's awesome, and, and they just, they don't know, their eyes are blinded. And they also, the thought of decreeing something scares them, spitless, because they don't even pray out loud. The majority of the body of Christ doesn't pray out loud. It just doesn't. And he said, but after that, he said, God will bring it together, and in five years. So, so we, this is why we have to decree, because our, our nation needs it. And I just said to God, we're a pocket, we're doing it, we're, we're a hub. We're going to decree this, because I love my nation, and I am not willing to let the enemy take it.
I'm not willing. There are too many people that are not going to heaven in Canada. Massive amounts of people that are on their way to hell. And they are so, they have so much darkness over them that you cannot, at this point in time, you cannot share the gospel with them because their hearts aren't open. And because they think Christians, see their perception, the enemy got there first. And we weren't living out loud, we were living in the building. So they don't have a great perception of Christians that we lay our life down for you. They don't know that we love drag queens. They are wounded, broken men. But we're not willing to give our children to them. So they don't know us and they don't know our heart. But we have to shift the spirit realm so that so that's where we're going. Guess I'm writing a book, eh? Kind of how to. <laughs> and I say I, but you know, it's like me and Brent and Jocelyn. It's like three are better than one. Isn't that a scripture? And with the Holy Spirit, we have four. You can get a signed copy. <laughs> Serious. If somebody wants to design a cover for us, whatever. I think I said everything that, that the Lord wanted me to say. <sighs> I, can't, I guess we have, we have homework. I, and I'm repenting. I thought mine, but I did not write them down. Oh, fail. I wrote a lot of other scriptures down, but I didn't write that down. But I did process through and think of it. But I would like to encourage you to do something. As you're reading your Bibles, yes, read verses out loud. I decided, I'm like, I'm going to start in Genesis, and I'm just going to read the whole Bible out loud, and I'm like, oh, God. And he goes, Charlene, you, you'll get to parts you know you need to read out loud. But we read through, when we were reading Ephesians through, we sat together, and we read, we took turns reading. Um, and we read the whole book of Ephesians through, and I go, <gasps> and you know it's my favorite book. And I have preached... Uh, you know, Bill and Cindy, you've been here the whole time. How many times have I preached on Ephesians? And if I could be on the island and I have one book, you, Ephesians. Man, it's like that. It's like we could do the whole youth thing out of Ephesians. I was going, oh, I've never seen that because I heard it out loud. And my, mm, mm. so your, your homework from now till Jesus comes perpetual assignment is every day read it out loud what this is what happens we read the bible we go like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and then we hit the circumstance and because we've read it but we haven't spoken it it, it activates two other things it activates our mouth and our ears so then you have triple rather than one memory channel and then when you hit the thing all of a sudden the word comes out because you've spoken it before. If you do not speak the word out loud, it won't come out when you need it to come out. I'd like to say you're the exception, but that would be lying, and then I'd have to repent, and I want to decrease so we cannot have sin. Are you ready for Pastor Brent? Oh, is it? Oh, I never looked at the clock. <laughs> We're going to close in prayer. Let's stand. Stand together. I told them I'd need 15 minutes. How'd I do? Almost 40. Oh, Jesus. And he said to me, Charlene, that means 45. I said, no. Oh, he does. <laughs> You're so good. Father, you are so good, and we love you. We decree that the King of Kings rules over our nation. We decree that you are Lord of our hearts and that you are the orchestrator, the purpose, the plan of everything that we're going to see happen, not just in our individual lives, but corporately as a body, in our communities, and Father, spreading out to everywhere. And yes, we decree that you have increased our measure. You have increased our measure. You have expanded us. You expand our ability to hear, to see, and to speak. You expand our capacity to hold your glory. Mm. You expand our capacity to function with wisdom and revelation. Oh, you have expanded our capacity to obey promptly. And Father, we say yes to you this morning. 
and I thank you, God, that the breeze and the, and the, the, the wind of the Holy Spirit is at our backs and propels us into what you have coming for us. In Jesus' name, amen.